Welcome to Brainwaves and Breakthroughs. Welcome to the Deep Dive. We're diving into the history of taxes today. Oh, should be interesting. We've got excerpts from a couple different books on the topic, so okay. we're going to really try to explore kind of the why, you know, yeah. why taxes exist, how they've changed over time, right. and uh, and the impact they have on societies around the world. You know, it might surprise you to know that taxes actually predate money. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Taxes before money. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. So instead of paying with like, you know, coins or bills. Right. Ancient civilizations, they used goods and services. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like a barter system for the common good. Okay. You know, in Egypt, around 3000 BCE okay, people, yeah. they paid their dues with grain, cattle, even labor. Wow. Our sources describe meticulous records kept on stone tablets. <gasps> wow. Imagine the ancient accountants. I was going to say, talk about a paper trail, right? All right. So this wasn't just an Egyptian thing, though, right? No, not okay. at all. Mesopotamia had a similar system. Oh. You know, using agricultural goods, livestock. Mm -hmm. The Inca Empire used labor as a form of tax. Mm -hmm. It's called the Mita system. Okay. And people contributed to public works, like roads, temples, that sort of thing. So it wasn't just, you know, an option to contribute. It right. was, like, built into the system. Yeah, it was a, it was a requirement. It was expected. Fascinating. Yeah. So when did we switch over to using, like, money coinage? Well, the shift started when coins emerged, right? Okay. Ancient Greece, they began using coinage to fund their wars. Sure. Also, upkeep of their cities. Makes sense. Interestingly, wealthy citizens. Yeah. They were expected to sponsor public services like festivals. Oh, it was no. a completely different way of thinking about civic duty back then. I was going to say, almost like a public service subscription oh, for the elite? Exactly. Okay. Did that kind of carry over to other empires? Other Well, the Roman Empire, yeah. they developed a much more intricate system. Okay. They had taxes on property, inheritance, even tariffs. Wow. You know, one example is the tributum. Okay. A land tax, based on how much land you owned, mm -hmm. funded their military infrastructure public services. So, I mean, it's really interesting to see how these taxes, like you said, yeah. they reflected Absolutely. the economic and social structures of the time. Right. You know, we've come a long way from bartering cows yeah, to assessing land. Yep. But I think when most people think about unusual taxes, yeah. their minds go to those quirky kind of global well, for sure. examples, right? Absolutely. So what are some of those that stand out to you? Uh, well, let's start with England's window tax in 1696. Okay. To avoid paying higher taxes based on the number of windows in their homes. Uh-huh. People bricked up their windows. What? Yeah. Wow. Can you imagine the lack of natural light? It's amazing what people will do to avoid taxes. It is. Makes you wonder if any of the loopholes today are really new. Right. <laughs> okay, what else? What else you got? Um, Peter the Great of Russia. He imposed a beard tax. A beard tax. In the late 17th century. Okay. He wanted to modernize Russia, and he saw beards okay. as like a sign of backwardness. Yeah. Interesting. So men had to pay for a token if they wanted to keep their beard. So pay up or shave. Exactly. I wonder how effective that was. It's hard to say for sure. Yeah. But it definitely shows how far governments will go. Right. To raise revenue and exert influence. Right. right. Yeah. Another long-standing tax was the salt tax in ancient China. Salt. Yeah. Really? It was a major source of income for centuries. It seems so basic. Why salt? Well, salt was vital, right? Sure. It's easily tax controlled. Right. It was only abolished fairly recently in 2014. Okay. Now, for a modern and amusing example, okay, Estonia. Yeah. They proposed a cow flatulence tax. A cow flatulence tax. In 2008. Wow. To address greenhouse gas emissions. Okay. It never actually went through. Okay. But it highlights the creativity. Or maybe desperation behind some tax policies. It really makes you think about how we might address climate change. Right. Through taxation. Yeah. What about bringing things back to the U.S.? Sure. What about here? We have some of our own quirks, right? Yeah, of course. Like the whole candy versus cookie oh, right. debate. Like, like classic. In some states, it all comes down to the ingredients, like flour. <laughs> it's true. It's just so strange how... Yeah, how differently... Different laws are written. Yeah, interpreted. Whoa, even within the same country. Right, even within the same country. It's wild. 
this actually makes me think about, you know, the broader theme of tax systems globally, right? Absolutely. Some countries have incredibly high tax rates. Yes. Some have almost none. That's right. So what are some of the most like notable Okay, well exam examples of that. Countries like Sweden, Denmark, France. Okay. They have some of the highest tax rates globally. Hmm. But they also have really extensive social benefits. Universal health care, education, strong social safety nets. So it's a different approach. It is. It's like high taxes, but with a greater sense of security. Yeah. And it's one that prioritizes collective well-being, you know. Right, right. And social equality. Makes you wonder, is that model sustainable in the long run, right? It's a good question. I mean, what are the what are the advantages, disadvantages? Yeah, it's a complex question. Yeah. On the other end of the spectrum, you've yeah. got the UAE, Monaco, Bermuda. Okay. Known for extremely low, sometimes non-existent income taxes. Wow. These are often seen as havens for the wealthy. Right. They attract investment, mm -hmm. encourage economic activity. So it's low taxes to kind of... Yeah, to incentivize wealth creation. Incentivize wealth creation, but then... But potentially at the cost of robust social services. Right. So it's really interesting to see how different societies prioritize Absolutely. different values mm -hmm. when they design their tax systems. Yeah, exactly. And it also raises questions about who really benefits from these systems, right? Yeah. Does a low tax environment truly benefit everyone? Right. Or does it primarily serve the interests of the already affluent? Mm. It's These are important things to consider when you're evaluating the effectiveness and fairness of any tax system. And speaking of the wealthy. Yes. I mean, their relationship with taxes right. is often a topic of debate. It is. Do they really pay their fair share, especially with all the loopholes and deductions available to them? That's a tough question. Yeah. There are there are definitely legal strategies right. that can reduce tax burdens yeah. for those with significant resources. Uh -huh. You know, charitable donations, mortgage interest deductions, yeah. breaks for investment income. I mean, right. the tax code's complex. Yeah. And those who can afford expert advice, right. they can certainly navigate it to their advantage. Right. And then there are the more, I guess, controversial practices, like no. using tax havens and offshore accounts. Yes. What are the ethical implications of those strategies? Well, the use of tax havens, places like the Cayman Islands, uh, the British Virgin Islands, it's a contentious issue. Sure. Wealthy individuals and corporations, yeah. they shift their assets right. to these low tax jurisdictions, right. essentially shielding a portion of their wealth from higher taxes. Yeah in their home countries. Right. It raises questions about fairness. Yeah. You know, and the impact on government revenues. Right. That could be used for public services. Right. It's like a global game of financial maneuvering. Yeah, in a way. And then you've got the issue of capital gains, right? Yes. Where income from investments is often taxed at a lower rate than wages. Right. This seems to favor those whose wealth comes from assets. It's a definite point of contention. Yeah. Critics argue this discrepancy. Yeah. It exacerbates wealth inequality right. as those who earn their income through traditional employment yeah. end up paying a higher proportion of their earnings in taxes. Right. It creates a system where wealth begets more wealth, hmm. while those relying on wages face a heavier tax burden. It's a complex issue. It's got yeah. social and economic ramifications. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So let's shift our focus now okay. to the middle class. Yeah. I mean, they often bear a significant tax burden. They do. And they're struggling with a rising cost of living. Right. They don't have access to the same loopholes as the wealthy. No. And they rely heavily on wage income. Yes. Which, as we've discussed, Rest. is often taxed at a higher rate. Right. Exactly. They face unique challenges within the system. Yeah. Their income primarily from wages, uh -huh. taxed more heavily yeah. than investment income. Yeah. Fewer opportunities to use deductions, uh -huh. other tax-saving strategies available to those with greater resources. It's like they're caught in a squeeze. Yeah, they are. Paying a significant portion of their income in taxes, mm -hmm. but not necessarily seeing the benefits. Right. And they're contributing a substantial portion of their income yeah. to fund public services. Right. But the rising costs of health care, education housing, essential expenses, right. it makes it hard to see the benefits right. of those contributions. Yeah. This perception of a disconnect between the taxes paid and the services received, right. it can lead to frustration oh, and a sense of unfairness. Yeah, absolutely. 
So to kind of better understand these systems, okay. let's take a look at how tax systems are actually ranked right. globally. Yeah. Our sources highlight yes. some countries that are considered to have well-designed systems okay. and some that are considered to have poorly designed systems. Right. So what are what are some examples of that? Well, countries like Estonia, New Zealand, Singapore, okay. they're consistently praised for their streamlined, okay. efficient, transparent tax systems. Okay. They're designed with low compliance costs uh -huh. and considered very business friendly. Their simplicity and efficiency okay. are seen as key factors in their economic success. It makes you wonder why more countries right. don't adopt these types of models. It's a good question. Okay, so what about the other end of the spectrum? Well, on the other end, yeah. you have countries like Italy, Brazil, India. Okay. They're often cited as having complex mm. bureaucratic tax systems. Okay. Challenging for businesses to navigate. Sure. Often leads to lower compliance rates. Right. Let's... I can imagine navigating those tax codes. Oh, a nightmare. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be a nightmare. It is. So it really does. I mean, it really highlights the point that our well-designed system yeah. benefits both yes. the government and the people. Absolutely. But you know what? Let's get back to those oh, quirky that. taxes. Right. I, I just find them so fascinating. I know. They're fun. They really do offer a glimpse into yeah, different cultures and yeah, priorities. For sure. So what else What else stands out? Okay. Well, Maine, yeah. they have a specific tax on blueberries. Blueberries. They're famous blueberries. Okay. A tax unique to their regional product. Wow. Then there's New York City. Okay. Where sliced bagels are taxed at a higher rate a bagel tax than whole bagels wow because of their rules on prepared food that is wild you learn something new every day every day what about give me something okay truly out of the box okay how about this yeah Venice, the city of canals uh-huh they introduced a shadow tax in 1993 a shadow tax businesses with awnings or canopies yeah they cast a shadow on public land okay they had to pay. Taxing the very shade. Yeah, pretty much. What they're creating. Yeah, it's an innovative, yeah, one. albeit unusual, yeah, approach uh, to generating revenue. Okay, what else? What else you got? Um, Bhutan, which measures its gross national happiness. Okay. Has a sin tax on tobacco and plastic bags. Mm -hmm. Attempt to discourage consumption of these products. Okay. Promote well-being and environmental responsibility. It's fascinating how taxes can be used to yeah. shape behavior. They can. In line with the country's values. They absolutely can. So what are some other examples of that? Okay, well, Germany yeah. has a church tax. A church tax. Registered members of certain churches pay a tax. Okay. Collected by the government. Okay. To support their religious institutions. Interesting. It's a, a an interesting example of how historical context influences modern tax policies. Sure. Then we have Japan. Okay. With their My Number system. Okay. It's a national identification number. Okay. Designed to streamline tax collection and social security. Oh, okay, so it sounds efficient. It is. But also raises questions about privacy. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. It does. It's the potential for yeah. government overreach. Yeah. yeah. It's a trade off many countries are grappling with. Yeah. Yeah. As they seek to modernize their tax systems. Uh, yeah. Ensure compliance. Right. Right. So we've we've covered a lot of ground here. Yeah. From from ancient grain payments right. to digital identification numbers. Yeah, it's incredible. It really is amazing. How taxes yeah. have woven their way through history. Right. You know, reflecting cultural values, yeah. economic structures. Mm -hmm social hierarchies it's it's clear that taxes aren't just about no collecting revenue no, they're, they're a reflection of how societies right decide to allocate resources yeah. address their priorities right. absolutely so from funding essential services right. to shaping behavior right. promoting social good yeah taxes really do play a vital role in our lives they do so we've explored the history the quirks and the challenges of taxation we have now Let's delve a little deeper yep. into the intricacies of modern tax systems right. and the debates surrounding them. Sounds good. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the deep dive. So we've covered a lot of ground. Yeah, we have. From the ancient origins of taxes to those, right. you know, eyebrow raising examples. Yeah, those for fun. From around the globe. Absolutely. But let's kind of zoom in now okay. and focus on some of the real world challenges right. that people face with modern tax systems. Yeah, absolutely. 
You know, earlier we touched on uh -huh. the pressures that the middle class faces. Right. It seems like they bear a pretty heavy tax burden. They do. Often without seeing the direct benefits. Yeah, it's a, it's a complex issue yeah. with multiple factors at play. You know, one point you raised yeah. was the difference in how wage income right. and investment income are taxed. Exactly. Those who earn their living through traditional jobs right. often pay a higher percentage yeah. of their income in taxes right. compared to those whose wealth comes primarily from investments. It, it almost seems to create an yeah. uneven playing field. It's a valid concern. Yeah. Yeah. It contributes to the feeling that the system favors right. those who already have wealth. Yeah. You know? What about what about deductions? Right. It seems like the wealthy have more opportunities. They do. They have more opportunities. To lower their tax bills yeah. through various deductions. He's right. The tax code's complex. Yeah. And those with the resources to hire experts, yeah. they can navigate it more yeah. effectively. Right. This can create a situation where the middle class, yeah. even while paying a significant portion of their income in taxes, right don't have the same tools at their disposal. And we can't forget about right. indirect taxes. Right. Like sales tax, VAT. Sales tax, VAT. Yeah. Yeah. Which tend to hit right. lower and middle income earners harder. Yeah. Absolutely. VAT. Yeah. Or value added tax. Yeah. Is a consumption tax. Yeah. Applied to goods and services. Right. At each stage of production. Okay. Because these taxes are embedded in the price of goods. Everyone pays them. Right. However, since lower and middle income individuals yeah. spend a larger proportion of their income right. on essential goods and services, right. they end up paying a greater percentage of their income oh. in VAT hmm. compared to those with higher incomes. So even yeah. basic necessities yeah. become no. more expensive. Essentially, yes. Yeah. It's a regressive form of taxation. Okay. Meaning... It impacts those with lower incomes right. disproportionately. It seems like a lot of the conversation yeah. around fairness uh -huh. centers on the wealthy right. and whether they contribute their fair share. It does. You know, tax havens are a yeah. big part of that discussion. They certainly are. Right. Tax havens are jurisdictions with very low or no. Okay. Corporate taxes okay. often have strict financial secrecy laws. Right. Making it difficult to track where the money is going. So they seem to be uh, magnets for those. Yeah. Looking to shield their wealth from taxation. For individuals and corporations seeking to minimize their tax burden. Right. The appeal is obvious. Sure. However, this practice has broader implications. Yeah. Critics argue it deprives countries right. of much needed revenue Okay. that could be used to fund public services and infrastructure. It's almost like a drain yeah. on the global economy. In a way. Right. Yeah. Siphoning off resources right. that could be used for the common good. That's one way to look at it. Yeah. The issue is complex. Yeah. Involves international cooperation. Right. Transparency. Sure. And a reevaluation of global financial systems. Another challenge. Yeah. And this one seems to be gaining momentum right. is how to tax the digital economy. This is a relatively new frontier in taxation. Yeah. The rise of e-commerce giants, online platforms, right. digital services has exposed gaps in traditional tax systems. Yeah, because these companies operate globally. Right, exactly. Generating significant profits, right. but often with limited physical presence yeah. in the countries where their customers reside. Exactly. Traditional tax laws often rely on physical presence right. to determine tax liability. Sure. This creates a challenge when companies conduct business right. primarily online. So how do you even begin to tax yeah. a company that exists virtually? It's a question governments are grappling with. Yeah. Some countries are implementing digital services taxes okay. aimed specifically at taxing the revenue generated Hi. by digital companies yeah. within their borders. Okay. Others are calling for international agreements right. to establish a more unified approach. Right. To taxing the digital economy. It seems like Thanks. a collaborative approach is necessary. Yeah, a patchwork of different national regulations yeah. could create confusion yeah. lead to double taxation mm. for businesses. Right. Finding a global solution will require cooperation and compromise. While we're on the topic of fairness, okay. let's talk about the concept of progressive taxation. Progressive taxation yeah. is a system where those with higher incomes okay. pay a higher percentage okay. of their income in taxes. Okay. The idea is that those who have more should contribute more. 
right. to support the services and infrastructure right. that benefit everyone. It's often seen as a way to address it is. income inequality yes. and ensure that everyone contributes their fair share. Exactly. Of course. Right. Critics argue that high tax rates yeah. can discourage investment and hinder economic growth. Sure. It's a complex debate yeah, it is. with economic and social ramifications. You know, I guess finding the right balance yeah. is key. Absolutely. Speaking of challenges, let's shift our attention to okay. what tax authorities face, right. you know, when they're trying to manage the, these you know. complex systems. Right. Tax evasion. Is a major problem. Yeah. Tax evasion, the illegal act of not paying taxes owed. Right. Is a significant challenge right. for governments worldwide. Yeah. It deprives them of revenue oh. needed to fund essential services. Right. And undermines the integrity of the tax system. So what measures are in place to combat? Well. Tax authorities employ various methods, gotcha. including audits, investigations, right. stricter enforcement measures. Sure. Increasingly, technology is playing a crucial role. Okay. Data analysis, artificial intelligence, information sharing across borders. Wow. Are helping to identify suspicious activity. Okay. And track down those who attempt to evade their tax obligations. It seems like technology is both a tool for right. evading taxes and a tool for catching those who do. Absolutely. The rise of digital currencies, right. online transactions, sophisticated financial instruments has created new challenges, right. but also new opportunities right. for tax enforcement. It's a constant race to keep pace yeah. with the evolving landscape of financial technology. And then there's tax avoidance, right. which, while legal, right. still poses a challenge uh, yeah. to ensuring everyone contributes fairly. Tax avoidance involves using legal loopholes okay. and strategies right. to minimize one's tax liability. Okay. While not illegal, yeah. tax avoidance can erode the tax base. Okay. Create an uneven playing field. Right. Governments constantly try to close these loopholes. Yeah. But it's an ongoing battle. Yeah. As soon as one loophole is closed, right. creative accountants and lawyers right. find new ways to minimize tax burdens right. for their clients. It's like a game of cat and mouse. It is. Yeah. Right. Between right. taxpayers seeking to minimize their contributions yeah. and governments trying to ensure a fair and uh, functional system. It highlights the tension yeah. between individual financial interests right. and the collective good. And let's not forget about the right. the often overlooked issue yeah. of administrative burdens. You're right. Complex tax codes, cumbersome paperwork, right. ever-changing regulations yeah. can be a nightmare yeah. for individuals and businesses. Right. These complexities yeah. can lead to errors, missed deadlines, penalties, sure. adding to the overall cost and frustration right. associated with tax compliance. Simplifying these systems. It would go a long way. Seems like it would go a long way yeah. to improving compliance. Absolutely. And reducing frustration. Streamlining processes, simplifying tax forms, right. providing clear guidance can make a big difference. Yeah. Many countries are exploring ways yeah. to use technology to improve the taxpayer experience. Right. Reduce administrative burdens. You know, it really does seem like technology it does. has a huge role to play does in shaping the future of taxation absolutely but, but before we jump into that okay let's kind of step back That's right. <laughs> and reflect on the fundamental purpose right of taxes yeah you know we often focus on the even? complexities the controversies yeah. but forget why we have taxes in the first place you're right at their core yeah taxes are the lifeblood of any modern society right they fund essential public services. Right. Healthcare, education, infrastructure, social safety nets. Right. Without taxes, right. governments would be unable to provide these services. That's right. It's easy to get caught up it is. in the debates about rates, right. loopholes. Yeah. But ultimately, taxes are about investing in our communities. They are. Building a better future. Absolutely. And they're also a tool for yep. social engineering. They are. Governments can use taxes to encourage certain behaviors. Right. Like investing in renewable energy. Okay. Or discourage behaviors deemed harmful. Right. Like smoking ship. It's a way to influence societal values. Yeah. And shape the kind of world we want to live in. Right. So ultimately, the, mm. the purpose of taxation mm. is to create a fairer, healthier, more prosperous society. It is. Right. Yeah. And finding that balance. Finding that balance is a constant challenge. Between individual responsibility and collective well-being. Yeah. It's a balancing act. Right. Requires careful consideration. Right. Ongoing dialogue. 
Speaking of the future, okay. let's explore the potential impact of technology okay. on tax systems around the world. Sounds good. We'll be back after a short break okay. to discuss how technology might revolutionize how? how we collect, manage, and think about taxes. Welcome back to the Deep Dive. It's been quite a journey exploring the world of taxes. Yeah, we've covered ancient origins, those global oddities, and the modern day challenges. I really dug deep. But now, let's look ahead. To the future. Yeah, technology is changing everything. It really is. How might those changes impact taxation? That's the big question, right. isn't it? It is. Earlier, we talked about the digital economy. Mm -hmm. How are governments dealing with taxing online businesses it's a real challenge yeah those traditional methods based on physical presence right they just aren't as effective anymore so how do you tax a company that basically exists online it's tricky some are trying these digital services taxes you know okay to target revenue from online activity within their borders makes sense but it seems like a global issue it is. Any international collaboration happening? There are discussions, definitely. Okay. Trying to find a unified approach to taxing the digital economy. The goal being? Fairness. Avoiding double taxation, making sure everyone contributes. Sounds complicated. Very. The digital economy is evolving so fast. Right. Tax policies need to keep up. Yeah. Definitely. And what about automation? Robots, AI, all that? Ah, uh, yes. Big question mark there. What happens to tax revenue if robots take over jobs? Could be a significant impact, definitely. Worrying, isn't it? Any solutions being considered? Well, some talk about taxing the robots themselves. Really? Or a universal basic income. A robot tax, huh? Sounds futuristic. A bit, but it's gaining some traction. Makes you think if our current systems can even handle these changes. Exactly. We may need to completely rethink our approach. What about technology helping tax administration itself? Oh, absolutely. Many countries are already on that path. Okay, how so? Online platforms, digital payments, using data, hmm. streamlining things for taxpayers and the authorities. So less headaches come tax season. Hopefully, yes. A more transparent and efficient system, that's the aim. Any trends in taxation that stand out to you? One I find interesting is the focus on environmental concern. Okay. Carbon taxes, incentives for renewable energy, that sort of thing. Using taxes to push for sustainability. Exactly. It's a powerful tool for change. Looking ahead, what are the big questions about the future of taxes? I think we need to ask, how do we create systems that are adaptable, resilient to all these changes? Good point. And have honest conversations about fairness, who benefits, all of that. It's about more than just the numbers. It is. Taxes reflect our values, how we see the future. How we invest, care for each other, build a better world. Exactly. Well, we've explored it all. The past, present, and future of taxes. Quite a deep dive. It is. We hope it gave you a new perspective. Taxes are more than just an obligation. Right. They're a chance to contribute, shape the future. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. Keep those minds curious.